Hi everyone, it's Rosie from Talking About BPD and I wanted to make a video um, for health professionals. How can health, prof health professionals help people with BPD and other related um, mental health difficulties? Um, and yeah, this links to one of my blog posts, um, which is called How Can Health care professionals create emotional safety and to be honest this blog post was just a few brief thoughts um, and I thought I'd just add a little bit to that because I'm so passionate about this topic um, I've kind of been on the receiving end of the good the bad and the ugly so it's good to talk about the good and and what can make people feel um, emotionally safe um, so yeah let's start with communication communication is just the bedrock and foundation of for me, um, how health uh, experiences with healthcare professionals can go. Um, you know, you have to remember that healthcare, it's a strange thing to go into. Um, you're potentially getting very close to strangers. They're looking at you, they're very close up and personal with you. So yeah, it's a very, it's a very unique encounter. It can be a bit odd at times. Um, and yeah, I just think one of the first things that health professionals need, need to know is um, understanding that people with BPD and other other mental health conditions, they may have a history of trauma. Um, BPD is associated with um, childhood trauma. Not necessarily, not everybody and everyone's experience is going to be very different, um, but it's just something to be aware of. Um, and within healthcare, there is an asymmetrical power imbalance, you know doctors, nurses, videos, whatever healthcare professional, they are in positions of power, they hold the authority in the room, um, they have the knowledge, they have the skills, and they have the agency as well over you, over the patients. Um, you know, patients can be even immobilized, anesthetized, you know, um, just physically unable to um, have agency where the professionals do. And I just think that's something to be aware of, um, that imbalance. Um, so yeah, interactions that you have with patients are of paramount importance because how you position your body and, and the things that you say can have a, such a, a more serious impact than if it were just like patient to patient talking. So I'd say things like um, not leaning over patients more than any more than you need to, just being aware of that, being aware of where the corners are in the room and how, where the doors are and things like that. They can that can have a massive impact um you know um things like control thinking about how you can give your patient as much control as possible um, and and how much of a voice that you can give them um so if they're if they are able to tell you um stop what to start with the pace and if you are able to kind of go with that then that 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 can create such a sense of safety for people who feel like they have no power and, and autonomy in that situation. Um, yeah, that, that can just be priceless. Um, I think also it's about just giving that time, giving that space, um, and just understanding that, especially if there's been a, a trauma, people might be reliving that, right? Trauma is going to live in the body, it's going to live in the mind, it's going to re repeat through people. Um, and just being aware of that. So if somebody is overcome with emotion or crying or frozen, then just little patience with that. Not to quickly jump to conclusions about them being weak or silly or ridiculous. Just understanding that whatever's happening in the room in the present, it might there might be a re-experiencing of like difficult memories there. Um, and just respecting that and just giving time to that is just so it's so valuable. I know that health professionals are pushed for time, um, but just giving a few moments extra, that could mean the world to somebody. That could mean that they're more likely to then come back to see you or um, even able to start to process their difficulties a bit more deeply. Like that's just so, it's just so priceless. Um, yeah, communication, as I said at the beginning, communication is everything. And I just can't stress this enough introduce yourself say hello say what your name is it sounds so basic but I've had quite a few encounters with healthcare professionals and I don't know their name I don't know their role um it just sets the tone 
just really sets the tone. Um, and I'd say also, if you can look at your patient, eat, I know that there's data inputting, looking at the computer, et cetera. Um, even if you can't look at your patient the whole time whilst talking to them, I get that. But just having a little bit of, of facing the patient, looking at them, interacting with them like human to human, it really does set a really positive, warm tone. I personally find it really hard to talk to somebody or trust them if I if I can't see their face. Um, yeah. Oh, language. Yeah. Okay. Language. Being conscious of the language that you're using to describe your patients is. I mean, it's just so it's so um powerful when language is used in an in a in a kind of kind way. So things like um oh they were refusing to comply or refusing to engage um that's very blaming that's very judgmental um is there not another way of phrasing that like you know they found it hard to do x y and z or and um, they struggled to attend the appointment for whatever reason um you know neglect self-care you know that's neglect neglecting something it does sound quite harsh and quite blaming um you know, there are other ways of phrasing these things like finds it difficult to to shower or finds it difficult to, you know, take their medicine, for example. Um, yeah, because with, P with PPD, shame is very easily activated for people. So just how people in positions of power phrase things, um, that can mean the difference between having a panic attack and, and not really. Um, yeah, and... Finally, my last point is privacy. Um, just being aware of things like how exposed a person can feel within healthcare. Um, you know, close the door if that's what the patient's comfortable with. Draw the curtain if that's what they're comfortable with. There's no harm in asking them in asking the patient like, "What do you like?" or like, "Would you like me to step outside whilst you, you know, do this, do that?" Um. I think that sometimes some professionals mistake um, the fact that, yeah, they may be looking at your body, but that doesn't mean you need to then, like, ignore all other rules about personal space and, and privacy as well. And just remember that vulnerability that your patient might be feeling, especially if they've had traumatic experiences in the past. Um, so, yeah. I hope you found this video helpful. I know there are lots of professionals who think very deeply about this stuff and who make it their life's work to ensure that patients feel comfortable, safe, um, things like that. But I just hope that this video could maybe give a little insight and help to those professionals who are maybe not thinking about this as much. Um, and yeah, as always, would love to hear from you in the comments. Um, so yeah, thank you. Have a lovely day, everyone. Bye.